Hello everyone. Today I thought we might do a color challenge. We're going to do Color Cube Volume 2 and I pulled another weirdo color palette that I wouldn't normally go for. So card 325 and we'll just see what we can do with that. It's bright. It's kind of fun. I'm thinking I might pull out um, my Kiritakis because I feel like we could definitely get this range of colors started with this big set. So let's pull some colors out here. This one is Ultramarine Pale. Perfect. I don't know, are we thinking this one here? Yes, we are. This is Aralyn, number 42. And then we've got an orange, so we'll pull out an orange. This one is Cadmium Orange 33. And then we've got a red there. How about Cadmium Red number 30? And then this one, there we go, Maroon number 72. Look at how easy that one was to pull those out. And I've got some mark making that we could maybe do, so we'll just see what we're going to be adding to this. Let me shut my drawer here before I got so much in that drawer I try to be super duper careful. I'm okay, so I'm loving those. So I have pulled out some 8 by 8 sheets of that Cotty handmade paper because this was also in the closet of ones I haven't pulled out to use after I initially got it last year and thought oh I like this and I thought oh no I don't because I think what I didn't like was the amount of warpage that it kind of does um but now after working on this paper in that book and doing those other projects that we've been doing I have decided especially for the price I like the way it feels I've decided I like this paper and we're going to lean a little more into maybe using it. It's less expensive than regular watercolor paper too, which is a nice little bonus. And I just like the way it feels. It feels like a handmade paper. I like the torn edges. I just like it now. Sometimes you just got to get something and if you're like, oh, I don't like this, put it in the closet and just think I'll come back to this later and later you know that might be like your new favorite thing so I don't ever throw anything out I just kind of put it away um, and before you give me the tape this stuff to your clothes to make it less sticky yes I know that trick somebody decides to tell me that trick on every single video stop telling me that trick I'm aware of it I just don't want to do it um, so when we pull this tape, we'll just hope it doesn't pull our paper or I might use the heat tool. Um, but you do whatever trick works for you. I've been doing this a long time and I'm just probably not going to do that trick. <laughs> just in case you people are wondering, because I swear two people on several of the last videos have thought, I'm going to tell you this trick. Okay. I know the trick. Thanks. <laughs> Stop telling me. <laughs> All right. Let's do some mark making. And I'm kind of feeling, I didn't tape those very straight, did I? I'm kind of feeling that we're gonna do some mark making on top. We could go ahead and do some mark making before we even start, but I'm kind of thinking that I'm gonna start off with a color here. So I've just got my big Princeton Neptune number six brush. This paper is different than the paper I normally use. It's a that, that's another reason why I might not have loved it when I first got it because it reacts different to all your paints and watercolors. And so then, you know, when something's different, you're like, hmm, I don't think I like this. It's not working the same as what I'm used to. So I don't know if you do that, but I tend to do that. I'm like, oh, I don't know. It's not the same as my other one. I don't think I like it. <laughs> All right, let's start there. Come back with some of this red. Ooh, that is red. I don't know if I like the bright red, but you know, that's exactly why I do these color palette challenges to step outside of our comfort zone 
and do things that I definitely would never normally do. I also have people that are like, I challenge you to pick ones that you don't like. And I'm thinking, what do you think I do? When I say I'm picking out a weirdo color palette, it's one I wouldn't normally pick myself. <laughs> oh. Look at that. Okay, I don't know if I like the yellow yellow. Did I already use the yellow? No, that was, wasn't that the orange? <laughs> I think that was the orange. The orange and the yellow kind of look the same there, don't they? All right, let's get this blue out and then just and I'm just throwing this down into my water. Somebody said the they couldn't match my stuff because they couldn't see my water. Um, there's nothing special about the water, I promise you. And if you feel like my water is my secret magic power power and you can't do the same thing I'm doing, we got a bigger problem. You're missing the whole point of sitting and exploring and having fun and playing at your art table, going where your inspiration leads you. That is my whole point and goal. I want you to have fun painting, not necessarily copying everything that I do. And when, because let me tell you, when I try to copy people, I can't get it either. Copying is not the same as me intuitively sitting and painting and getting somewhere really cool. Um, copying is you trying to duplicate everything that I'm intuitively doing. It's just hard. You're never going to get the same result. Um, are you using the same paper? Are you using the same brush? Are you using hard water versus soft water? I don't know what mine is. It's whatever's coming out of the sink. But I'm just saying, there's lots of factors that go in. Are you using the same paint I'm using? Are you, you know, are you in the same frame of mind that I'm in that day? Or are you, you know, there's all kinds of stuff that goes into whether you're going to get something similar or not. Have you been painting for a long time? Is this the first time you've ever picked up a paintbrush? I mean, lots of, lots of factors there. Don't get discouraged and maybe try to get less upset about not duplicating what I'm doing. A lot of people are like, you make it look so easy, but really I'm just sitting here playing as I'm working and I think that's what makes it look easy because um, I'm having fun and intuitively going wherever I want to go and I'm not trying to come up with any specific outcome whereas if you're trying to copy what I'm doing you're trying to come up with a specific outcome that's what's frustrating start with no expectations take the techniques that you see and think aha I might want to try that but don't think oh it looked completely different because yes it's going to look completely different than what I did there's no way to avoid that it is what it is I'm really liking the blue in there let's try these a little bit well, let me, I'm going to let it kind of do its thing and we'll come back to it. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? <laughs> uh, I swear when we're doing these, I have a million things go through my mind at the same time. But this would be a good time to pull out some cardboard maybe and just set something on top of here. And we'll see if we get any good cardboard marks out of that. Got another one over here. I don't know if the paper's maybe the paper is too dry but all right let's let that kind of sit what we're hoping is the cardboard soaks up a little paint maybe pushes a little paint I may have let it dry too long on this one we'll see and I'll be right back all right I don't know how dry we are yet but I've let this sit for a while while I have just putzed around my art room okay that one was too dry we didn't get nothing out of that oh Okay, <laughs> we got a ton of texture out of this side, so let me make sure that this is dry. Because this paper's warped, that's why I want to make sure, see if I can flatten that out a little bit. That's the only thing about the Cotty paper, that's what I didn't like about it the first time I had it out using it. Um, but I do like the handmade feel. I like where it goes, so I still want to use these. Okay, so I've pulled out some of my favorite stencils. Um, I really still love this one that looks like little hanging curtains. I'm kind of feeling like maybe we could just mark make it up. So I have pulled out, and what is this? I'll link it, I'll put a link below. This is uh, Stencil Girl Products S. 
575. So that's a stencil girl stencil. I'm kind of feeling like right through here. And what if we do it in, say, a red? We could do it in this blue. I'm kind of feeling the blue. Okay, so I've got this uh, blue light by the Blick Matte paint, which is what I really like playing in. I like the matteness of it, which I can make my own paint matte with gesso, but uh, I just like those. So a little bit of paint here on the sponge. Let's just see. And I, I, I just am in a fun and funky mood playing lately here with some of our paint projects that we've done here on YouTube. So I'm just kind of feeling like let's just continue along. Just some of the funky ideas that might come to us as we're experimenting. I'm not trying to create some masterpiece. I'm having some fun playing, trying out new colors, experimenting, just finding the joy of scenting. <laughs> just finding some joy in sitting at our art table. I'm going to put that down here because why not? <laughs> why not? Just because. And I like layering my mediums. You just got to be thoughtful in the way that you layer it. So if you if you wanted watercolor and acrylic paint and gouache, could you put gouache on top of acrylic paint? Eh, probably not your best choice. Um, probably won't work for you like it should. But can you put watercolor and gouache on top of each other? Definitely. Can you put acrylic paint on top of watercolor and gouache? Definitely. Can you put oil pastels down first? No. This is brush mark by Tim Holtz. Um, and I like that it looks like some brush marks, which we could, you know, we could do ourselves too, but it's kind of fun to be like, okay, let's throw a few of these in here, maybe in this burgundy or this, it might even be a bright red, but I'm going to leave the blue paint on here and maybe it'll be a purple. <laughs> but I think I'm just going to throw some of these out here. You can do this with your paintbrush too. That's what I'm saying. Doesn't have to be a stencil. I just have it and I thought, mm, never used it. Let's try it. Oh, that's kind of fun. Oh, kind of liking that. You can be a little tiny bit more deliberate, you know, when you're doing something like this and be like, okay, let's just be kind of organic and move these around and just see like what, what can we get? Oh yeah. Huh. I've got a habit of squishing my paint outside of the stencil where I intended. Like you can see it a little bit right there. Let's just come back with, there we go. Now it's on purpose. Oh, I like it. I like it with the blue kind of touching in there. Good one. <laughs> okay, I'm kind of feeling too. I like, I like this stencil here, which may or may not still be available. It's just an older one that's my favorite. Let's see, this is the Crafters Workshop TCW4. 456S. I think it's like, I don't know, hashed lines or something like that. I'll have to find it and then I'll link it if I find it. But I'm just feeling the fun. Let's just keep on dipping that same sponge in there. Why not? Kind of feeling like maybe right through here. Oh, ha, ha, ha. I like it right there. It didn't do it nearly as much over here as I wanted. So I'm trying not to put the stencil in the paint there. Let's go ahead over here and get a little more. Oh, there we go. I like it. I like it. Arr! Oh, yeah. That was a little overdone in the how I pressed the paint down in there, but I don't even care. Right. 
Oh yeah, oh yeah, this is kind of fun. Let's see, I also kind of like this little, little tiny hash marky one. I've just pulled a bunch of them out to play with. What, what, where is the writing? I don't see the writing. All right, don't think it's labeled, so I'll definitely try to find that link. But let's pull, let's open the yellow one. And I'm still kind of leaving the paint on the sponge because why not? That way it'll kind of blend and do something fun. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I wanted. Let's do that over here a little bit. <gasps> and up here some more. Fun! Okay, this is <laughs> a little bit of crazy fun today, but I like it. I like it, I like it, I like it. Now I feel like we can come in here with maybe some, ooh, maybe some stabilos. Let's see if I can pull these out without making a complete mess of everything up here on my thing. I've got a little cup of the stabilo woodies. Pull those out. Let's see, because we got this red, we definitely got the orange and the blue. Still trying to keep our colors in mind. We've got the yellow. That's kind of all that are in our palette. Here's our palette, our original. I think we've stuck pretty good to our palette too, by the way. <laughs> yes, we have. All right, maybe we'll set that cup right there. I'm gonna move this where I don't set my hand right into it. I also have my uh, Neo Color, uh, my um, oh, you know what I'm saying, my Mungo oil pastels over here. We could pull those out and use those too. Cause I like the vibrancy of the color of the pastels, which is why I use those so much. I love them. These are fun. I don't pull them out enough. Ooh, I like it. Could do it in a different color over here and see what do you like better. Oh, I like that too. Oh, let's do the orange and the blue. I don't know about that. Was that a bad choice? That might have been a bad choice. <laughs> I don't know about that. Let's see. Maybe if we do the red on top of this side and then we can be like, oh, we like this or that better. Let's just see. Okay. I don't know if I like that any better than that. I don't know. Hmm. Maybe, maybe let's pull this one out. See, these are just easier to use and they're even more vibrant. This is a Mungo pastel. So of course I will hit these with the, when I'm done, I'll hit them with the Sennelier oil pastel fixative, which sets them up in a day or two. And then they don't even smudge. These Mungos don't any, anyway. Um, it's kind of cool how that works with these. Cause you know, oil pastels for the most part don't really seem to dry. Um, cause of whatever medium it is. I mean, you gotta wonder why they stay wet in this stick forever. Well, they do the same on your paper. So that pastel fixative seems to get them to a tack point where you can touch it and it don't smudge and come off. And I love that. Okay. I like that too. I like it. I like drawing on top of stencils cause it gives it depth and layer. Like it just gives it extra depth and interest. Um, so that's why you always see me do that. Then it looks less like a stencil and more like something you drew or painted. Um, and I like that. We can add that interest to those. Gives them like a more three dimensional kind of feel. It just adds to the interest. Oh, what else do we want to do? Okay, I like that. Let's see, maybe a red. Maybe I like this red. I 
like that. I like how this layered on top of that stencil there. I like all those layers in there. Um, I like this gold over here too, which is that yellowy color that we've got. Nice. All right, we got a lot going on here. Anything we want to do to kind of finish it off? Any last marks? Any last... I don't know. Let's think about this for a moment. We could come in with something a little darker. Maybe our Stabilo Marksall or a very heavy something or even like a black. This is my Stabilo Marksall. So everybody's like, oh, you need a touch of white. You need a touch of black. This could be our kind of touch of black here um, with our kind of organic -y mark making getting in here. I don't buy into the touch of black, touch of white, make every corner a different color philosophies. You know, learn the rules and then break the rules. That's what really lends you into your most creative times and things. Um, learn what those rules are. You know, make every color a corner a different color. Have a touch of white, have a touch of black, get all those colors in there. I don't necessarily. You know, I, I've learned them all. You know, the compositions, don't put anything in the center. I do tend to follow that one. I don't like things that are centered. Um, I tend to start with the corners and work my way in and around in that way. Um, but it is good to at least, you know, learn your fundamentals and your basics and then break those rules as you see fit as an artist. I'm liking the scribble bit. You may not like it, but I like it. Do the things that you like. Take from the different parts of you know what an artist does and do the parts that you like into your own work and then that will kind of guide you into your own style, all the parts that you like. Um, okay, I'm loving that actually. Now I'm even thinking we could come back with some white Posca dots and then I'll feel like we're there. This is another one of those, let's throw everything in the kitchen sinks at it kind of abstracts. They're kind of fun. There's lots of mark making. We played in some colors that we never play in because um, these colors I would not have picked. And then we end up with something amazing that we're like, huh, I never would have created that in a million years if I had tried, which is what I find so much fun about the art and the projects that we do. Man, I've come up with the most amazing things that I'm like, wow, I didn't even know that was in me. Hmm. I don't know. I'm liking it peel the tape and see what we got and then we'll know do we need to add anything else so we'll know all right and I love it when you peel the tape it's a, to this day it's still my very favorite part of the project because it like reveals itself it turns into magically a piece of finished art whereas you know, because we've got this edge that says, I'm finished. You got somewhere you can sign it at the bottom. Whereas when you go to edge to edge, you got to frame it out till it looks finished. And I love peeling the tape and being like, wow, look how good that looks. Didn't even like expect to get there. <gasps> like, look at that. <laughs> I think that turned out pretty darn cool. Like that just made today's a great painting day. Man, I can't tell you how excited. I just like, I got goosebumps. Um, I feel like we're at the theater and these are little bits of color and stuff and the curtains that we saw when we were at the theater. Um, just the feeling. I feel like it's, we're at some fancy show and we're watching something that's going to just be so amazing. Oh, just like a sigh of relief when we peel the tape and we're like oh I love it so much and I definitely would never have created this off the top of my head 
without the help of my color palette cards. That's why I love them so much. Look at that one. Now, should we flip it? Let's see. I'm kind of loving it with the <laughs> curtain at the top there. We could also do, um, ooh, kind of loving that like that too. Let's just see. Like if we did that right there. Whoa, kind of like that right there. Oh my gosh. I hope you guys, I can't feel it. Look, I'm really feeling that. It looks like the continuation of the two when we do that, doesn't it? I hope you guys had fun painting with me today. This ended up being a great painting day. I think we stuck to our color palette pretty darn good. I was going for fun, whimsical, pattern, color, and I definitely think we got there today. Super fun set. All right, guys, I will see you next time.